Today is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time and I'm going to read the Gospel and say a few words on it. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee or of Tiberias and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and he sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish peace, feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and he said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, that Simon Peter's brother, said, There's a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as five thousand men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as they wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, Pick up the pieces left over so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled twelve hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people seeing the sign that he had given said, This really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. One day in 1950, a middle-aged woman walked into the slums of a very large city. She had only two dollars in her purse, no income and no place to stay. She believed herself called by God to serve the poorest of the poor and he would provide all that was needed. That woman, of course, was Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She started off with the equivalent of five loaves, but she made them freely available to God. Then the miracle happened. The multiplication of the loaves in her instance has been translated into the founding of scores of schools and leprosy clinics, umpteen homes for the dying, and hundreds of thousands of co-workers the world over. Now in today's gospel, a small boy was asked to part with his precious loaves and fishes, which was probably for his lunch. When he willingly does so, Jesus swings into action and miraculously feeds the crowd. God asks small sacrifices of us too, like he did for that little boy. And if we respond with generosity, he can reach out through us to many others who hunger for his love. When he asks something of us, like the small boy in the story, do we respond with the same willingness and generosity? We can't all be like Mother Teresa, but we can be like that little boy. Give whatever we have with a good heart, and then the miracle happens. We all know that the feeding of the crowd foreshadows the Eucharist. And in the Mass, God can satisfy firstly our own spiritual hunger, and then we can help others to draw inner strength from the Eucharist. Jesus said, Labour not for the food that perisheth, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Most people in our part of the world are not hungering for ordinary food and drink. But according to Mother Teresa herself, she says that there is a great spiritual hunger in the West, 
in many people's lives for a deeper meaning to life, a real sense of belonging, an acceptance of who they are, a longing for pardon and forgiveness, all spiritual things. Ultimately, a yearning for love, without which, as St. John Paul II used to say, without love, life is bereft of meaning. It doesn't make sense. But if we're genuine believers, the feeding of the physically hungry must also concern us. It is one, as you know, of the corporal works of mercy. On Friday last, I was down at the hub, that's the mission hub in Solly Street, at a cheese and wine and entertainment evening to help raise money for Mary's Meals. Now, Mary's Meals is a wonderful charity. Its main aim is to make sure that children don't go to bed hungry. And actually, every day, they're feeding one and a half million children, especially in Africa. But the evening brought a home to us as well. The looming famines in Africa at present, particularly now, as a result of war and drought, where hunger stalks the land and children go to bed hungry. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. Now we just heard in the reading also that 12 hampers were collected from the scraps after the people have had their fill. I notice that people who generously give of themselves to others, they always seem to have something left over for the next person. You sometimes, for instance, hear of parents, very generous parents, with lots of offspring of their own who are still willing to adopt or foster a child in need. And Jesus did say, I was a stranger and you made me welcome. Saint Therese, Saint Therese, the little flower, this is what she has to say. Love gives everything. But we, alas, we give only after reckoning. We hesitate to sacrifice what is advantageous to ourselves. This is not love. For love is blind. It's a wild torrent that leaves nothing behind in the path where it has gone. In the passage today, Jesus sent no one away hungry. They all ate as much as they wanted. They all had their fill. When we come to him with open hands, as it says in the psalm, and a pure heart, we won't be sent away hungry either. God bless you all.